Good evening, good evening. Hello, 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 everyone. Good evening, everyone. Gonna give some people some time to start coming on in. Hello, 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 Cousin Shaki. Hello, how are you? How's everyone doing? Hello, hello. Welcome to another episode of Testify Tuesday. I am Felicia Joseph, and I am so happy and grateful and blessed to be with you guys again on this evening. Greetings. Greetings, Minister Thurston. Greetings. How are you? Um, I am so grateful to be with you guys on this evening with everything that's going on, with everything that we're seeing on the news, with all of the turmoil and all of the uproars going on all around the world. I thank God that we are able to meet. I thank God that we are able to come together and talk to one another. I thank God that we are able to come on and, and, you know, talk with one another, tell of the goodness of the Lord, lift up the goodness of the Lord. I ask when you come on on this week that you please like and share this video. Please like and share. Hi. Hi, Rhonda. How are you, sweetie? Um, it is so good to, to be in the land of the living. There are so many people right now who are suffering devastation. There are so many people right now who are who are, you know, dealing with loss. There are so many people who started this week like I thinking it would be like any other week. There are so many people who started this week thinking about what they had to do all week, probably already pushing and rushing the week till Friday and the weekend and then Things happen like these storms that have been coming through. Things happen like all the turmoil and the natural disasters that have been happening. And people have lost their homes, have lost their lives, have lost their automobiles, have have lost their businesses, have lost their means of income. Things that they never would have thought at the beginning of this week that they would have to deal with at the end of this week. But God... God protected you. God brought you. God kept you. God kept your loved ones. You know, it's so much that we have to be grateful for. So as usual, I'm going to ask you when you come on, after you like and share, to please put one thing in the comments that you are grateful for. No, everything's not perfect. No, everything is not exactly like you wanted. No, you don't have everything that you desire. Everything that you think you need, but you do have a place to live. You do have a, a amount of health that you can walk, you can talk, you can make decisions, you can see, you can speak, you can articulate your thoughts, you can tell somebody what you want, what you're thinking about. You know what I mean? You're not in a a place where you don't know what you're going to do next. You understand? Thank God there are things that you are grateful for. Life, health, strength, things that we take for granted. Things that someone else is, is dying for. Things that someone else is, is doing anything and everything to try to get. And, and sometimes we take for granted. These things aren't promised to us. God doesn't even promise us tomorrow. God didn't promise you that you'll wake up in the morning. God didn't promise you that you're going to make it to the end of this night. But we thank and we praise God for his mercy, for his grace, for his protection, for his unmerited favor, for his love, for his kindness, for his mercy. Hallelujah. For his salvation. Hallelujah. For the gift of the Holy Ghost. For being in our right minds. For knowing the difference between right and wrong. For being able to come out of the situations that we were once in. For being able to help others now who may still be in the same situations. Amen. 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 So I see a few 
comments in here. Thank God. And I thank you all for who have, all of you who have listened and liked and shared and have commented. So let's, I'm trying to get to the first one. Hello, Crystalline. How are you? Good evening, sweetie. Hello, my sister, Ree. How are you, Ree? And Ree tonight says that she is grateful and thankful for purpose. Amen. Amen. There's nothing like having a purpose and walking in that purpose and fulfilling that purpose and seeing the Lord opening doors and making ways for that purpose to be uh, fulfilled. There's nothing like it. Amen. So we thank God for purpose with you on this evening, Sister Ree. Um, Sister Nisi says that she's grateful for being in her right mind. Amen. Amen. Because there were times, there's a lot of us who have gone through things that we keep secret. There were a lot of us who thought we were about to lose our minds. There were a lot of us that were on the brink of losing our minds, but God, but thank God with that last strand of common sense, with that last strand of sanity, we were able to re realize that we needed to turn it over to Jesus, that we needed to release it all to God, that it was too big for us to handle, that it was too much for us to take on alone. And with that last bit of sanity we were holding on to, we turned it over to Jesus. Hallelujah. And because of that, right now we are not only in our right minds, but we are in our godly minds. Hallelujah. We're making right decisions. We're having our steps ordered by the one and only, by the master of the universe. How about that? Amen. So Sister Nisi, I agree with you that I am grateful and we all can say that we are grateful for being in our right mind. Amen. I'm trying to make sure that I don't miss anyone. Hello to everyone who's coming in. Hello, Monique. Hello, Samantha. Hello, Brandy and Kevin. Hello, Serena. Um, Bonita, excuse me. I see, Re. I saw your name and talking about saying hi to you again. So I can say hi to you again too. <laughs> I see Cousin Shaki says that she's grateful for all of God's benefits. Ha! There you go. That's something within itself to be grateful for the benefits. You know, we always say, oh, this is a hard life. You know, walking in salvation, living a godly life is not easy. Well, honey, it's not supposed to be. My Bible tells me to reign with him. I'm going to suffer with him. So what he came down here and did, what he did for us, you know, being set apart, being different. You know, that's not an easy thing. Whenever you're different from the norm, whenever you don't go along with, with everybody else, whenever you don't have the popular vote, that is uncomfortable. But we as the people of God are different. We are set apart. We are sanctified. We have been, we have come out from amongst the norm. We are living a life that's ordered by God. But on the other side of that difference, at the end, in the last day, when we stand before Christ, it's that difference. It's that peculiarness. It's that not being what everybody else is, not doing what everybody else was doing. Because what do they say? Narrow is the right way and the straight path that leads to heaven and leads to right. But wide is that road that leads to destruction. So everybody, the in crowd, the it people, they're all on that road that's leading to destruction. They're all on that road that's leading to, to devastation, that's leading to, to turmoil, that's leading to a destructive end. But to be different, to follow Jesus to walk with the Father, to have faith to know that those ordered steps are going to get you to the desired end, which is to live and reign with God forever, that's worth being a little bit uncomfortable now. What do you say? Can I see amen? Can you type amen if you agree with that on this evening? Amen, amen, amen. Yes, so we are grateful for those benefits. Hello, Kimberly. Uh, Crystalline says she's grateful that God saw past her faults and saw her needs. Amen. Amen. So am I. That's one of the, that's something no one else could do like God. No one else can quite do that like God. Everybody else says they can look past that bad attitude. They can look past that, you know, nasty disposition. They can look past that terrible demeanor, but 
They're all that's some that's gonna bother them. That's flesh. We're all human, but God looks past what we're doing wrong. God looks past what we don't know. God looks past our ignorance. He looks past our self righteousness. He looks past our sins and our dirt and our disgrace. He looks past all of that and he sees that we need his love. We need his understanding. We need his grace. We need his protection. We need his unmerited favor. We need him. And he is there to supply that need because he knows once we let him in, he'll clean all of that dirt up. He'll clean it all up. I'm a living testimony because he did it for me. I'm not just telling you what I think. I'm not just telling you something that I heard. I'm telling you what I know. I'm telling you what the father did for me. So I'm grateful for that as well, as well. Uh, hello, Muriel. I see a lot of people. I thank and praise God for everyone that has come on, everyone that is with us. We have a wonderful, wonderful guest on tonight. I want to take this time first to say thank you to all of my Mother's Day Month guests, all of the beautiful women of God that came by and shared with us for testify tuesday this month i thank god for sister dewana blades who was our first guest for this month and it was a wonderful wonderful time in the lord it was a great experience to talk with her and to hear her story and hear her testimony i thank god for lady c lady lady carol irvin who was our second guest on this month for the Mother's Day month with a phenomenal testimony, a phenomenal testimony on how when she gave birth to her son, she could not walk. She was paralyzed for three months, could not walk, could not move because of some trauma that came, you know, during the delivery process. But the prophet had given her a warning and told her before she even went into labor that this was going to happen, that there was a purpose for this in her life. That testimony blessed me. And we thank her for all that she has done. We thank God for the Pullen sisters, my mother and my aunties, who stopped on through and blessed us with wonderful testimonies for week three of the Mother's Day special. And I thank God for this young lady that's going to be on with us tonight. She is a phenomenal woman, phenomenal woman, full of wisdom. And uh, I wanted to round out, I wanted to round out Testify Tuesday for the month for us ladies. I wanted to uh, give us, you know, younger women that had testimonies about single parents, you know, being a single mother, raising a child alone, you know, what those types of struggles look like and how God intervened and made that happen. Then we had uh, a ma married woman that came on, was married, had her children, raised a family with her husband and some of the struggles that came that with that and some of the things, you know, we all need to lean and depend on God for something, no matter what the circumstance is. It's always easy to look at someone else and say, oh, well, if I had it this way, you know, maybe it would be easier. Or, or if I did it this way, maybe it would be easier. But no, we all, no matter what our life what our lives uh, bring us to, no matter what it's all about, we all have our own individual sets of tests, struggles, turmoils, pitfalls, temptations. We all have our own that we have to deal with and the Lord will bring us through. So I wanted to kind of touch on all of that of uh, this month with the, with the women that we brought in. So, and then of course the pulling sisters, amazing not too much more i can say about them i mean they i phenomenal testimonies but on tonight we're going to go and we're going to hear some wisdom one of the one one of the best things about us women is that when we have our elders, when we have our older women who've been through it, who've lived lives, who've had these experiences, who've gone through things and aren't too ashamed to sit down and talk to us and share that wisdom with us to help us and mold us and build us into the women that we should be. So we have a lot of wisdom about to come on to Testify Tuesday tonight. Mother Mary Matthews is a mother, 
a grandmother, a great grandmother. She she is a phenomenal businesswoman. I'm gonna let you, her tell you about her life and the things that she's been through. But there are two specific things that I know of her testimony that leave me in awe of the strength of this woman and the faith in God that she has that has sustained her until this day. So without further ado, because it's 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 doing some storming and crazy stuff here in Florida and we don't want the internet to, you know, start acting up. So we're going to, without further ado, go ahead and bring our guest for the evening on so we can talk to her for just a little while. All right. We're going to go ahead and bring her from Florida all the way to the Bronx, New York right now. Meet up with our guest. Hello, beautiful. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing on this evening? How's everything in the Bronx, New York? So far. So far, so good. <laughs> well, everyone, Testify Tuesday crew. This is Mother Mary Matthews. So, Miss Beautiful, tell us a little bit about yourself. Oh, dear. Where should I start? <laughs> I didn't tell y'all she was a comedian, but she is. <laughs> well, to start off, when you're young and things happen, you don't realize what's going on. There were times when I'd be by myself. And something is happening on the outside. And mm -hmm. I get this strange feeling going like the curtains will start blowing, swaying back and forth. And I'm saying to myself, what's going on? Right. And this particular day, things started falling. I said, let me get out of here. So I'm walking, <laughs> and as I'm walking, I'm saying, something is not right. Something happened. So as I get closer to my house, my friend runs out and tells me, my father died. Her father died. Oh, this wow. This is a strange feeling that I got. Right. And as I grew up, I try not to think about those things. But this is a gift that God has given me. Right. But it worked. And all of a sudden, I look at the clock and I said, oh, gee, it's five minutes to three. And 3.30, I'll be going home. But why am I thinking about the kids all of a sudden? This strange feeling again. So I'm standing there and I'm doing my little work and all of a sudden the phone rings and the doctors go to pick it up. I said, don't pick it up. It's for me. <laughs> that means he says, what do you mean? I say, the call is for me. So I pick it up and my daughter's car screaming, Mark, is, Mark got hit by a car. Mark got hit by a car and he's not moving. He's not talking. Oh, so the doctor God. looked at me and she said, well, how did you know that call was for you? I said, because all of a sudden the kids got on my mind. And it was so heavy. And I said, well, why is this? I'm going to see them in a half an hour. Why? That was one experience with me. That's okay. Now, when that happened, my, my question is, now, you told us as a young child, so from very, very young, you have had the, the discernment gift, the gift of discernment where the Lord would let you know things were going to happen and prepare you for that. Growing up, as you saw, you know, more and more and more, there were times when these things would happen. How long did it take you to realize that there may have been a reason why this happened? Or God, you know, this is a gift. What am I supposed to do with it? Did you well, try to run from it or did you just accept it? Well, at the beginning, no, you don't want to accept things like this. You really don't because it's a little frightening. Right. I remember when Kenny got shot, when he was assassinated. Mm -hmm. I was getting dressed for work. Then all of a sudden, the strange feeling again. And I'm sitting there and I look at him and I said, gee, he looks as if he knows something is going to happen to him today, but he just don't know what. So I said to myself, oh, get up and stop this nonsense and go get dressed for work. And as I get dressed for work, all of a sudden I hear, he got assassinated. I said, I don't believe this. I don't believe it. And I don't want to accept this because right. it's frightening. Yeah, it is. But it is. I still, it still happens until this day. Things are still happening that way. But my testimony is being angry with God. Who's okay. angry with God? 
I did. I was so angry with him, I stopped going to church. I stopped praying. I stopped reading the Bible. I did not acknowledge him at all. And this started in 04. That's when my daughter passed. So from 04 until 2015, I didn't go to church. I didn't pray. I didn't talk to God. I ignored him. And my testimony is finally, it's very short. He said <laughs> to me one day, my child, why are you so angry with me? I said, because you took so much from me. So what did I take? I said, well, in 04, you took my daughter. 05, you took my mother. 06, you took my brother. 07, you took my favorite aunt and my favorite cousin. And 08, you took my husband. So that's why I'm so angry with you, because you took all that from me. He said, but I didn't take anything from you. They was never yours. <laughs> my children, mm -hmm. they were always mine. They were sick, and I brought them home so I could take care of them, because you could no longer take care of them. No one else could take care of them. She said, that wasn't yours. They were on loan to you. Right. You know, that's powerful because so many people deal with death in different ways. And a lot of people do get angry with the Lord when the Bible tells us, you know, it, it, it's we all are here, but it's appointed to man that we're going to die. We, we are not going to live forever. We're going to die. But after death comes eternal life. But sometimes death is so hard to accept. And it's so moving to hear you talk about it and tell how you did get angry with God, you know, because you felt like he was taking so much. But when he explained this, when, when you had the encounter with the Lord and the Lord spoke to you and told you, you know, they were never yours to begin with. This is why I was doing this. Did you then feel peace? Did you feel oh, yeah. some type of closure? That all of that to me. They were on loan to you. So I said, well, thank you, God, for the loan. I enjoyed them while I had them. And then <laughs> Sunday, I got up and went to church, and I've been going every since. But that was, you know, you said it was hard. Yes, it was very hard. But it was very hard. I them up, and I've been happy ever since. So would you, would you regret the decision? Would you regret the decision of, okay, it's time for me to shake this off and get, get you know, go on back? to church and do well, what I need. At that time, I couldn't shake it because I was so angry. Right. Because I thought they were mine. Right. Until I was told they wasn't mine. And they were never mine. They were just <laughs> alone to me. <laughs> After that, you're right. Right. Nothing belongs. It's here for you to enjoy. Everything belongs to the Lord. Everything belongs to him. And if you put it here and you don't enjoy it while it's here, that's up to you. So that's, that's it. So I want to thank you. I want to thank you so much for taking time out of your busy, busy New York schedule to talk to me in the Testify Tuesday crew on this evening. It really did bless us. For the people that are tuning in that are actually in Westchester County that are in New York, tell them where you worship. Tell them where your church is and let them know the address in case they want to come and worship with you and your church family. Well, it's Greater Centennial, AME sign, 312 mm -hmm. South. 8th Avenue, Mount Vernon, New York. And the Reverend Dr. Stephen W. Four was a teacher. Okay. Well, thank you so much. I hope that you have a wonderful and safe rest of your evening. I want to thank you so much for coming on and sharing with the Testify Tuesday crew. And you keep sharing your testimonies. You hear me? Yes, ma'am. All right. Love you. Me too. All right. <laughs> Didn't I tell you, Testify Tuesday, it don't take a lot of words. It don't take a lot of time. When you have something to say, you get on, you say it, and you go on about your business. Amen? It doesn't take a long time to say anything. Now, I saw Mama Bear come on. Hi, Miss Hannah. 
Hi, I'm so glad you made it home safely. Uh, I saw that there was a big wreck on State Road 200 right when I got home. So I thank God for traveling mercies because he got me here before the big accident. And I'm glad that you made it home safe and sound. Um, so Testify Tuesday, I have a few things that I want to talk to you guys about. Hello, Lady C. Hello. Um, uh, with that, now you hear how we all go through that and we all deal with death differently. And sometimes the enemy can use anything to try to separate us from the Lord, to try to separate us from our purpose, to try to surplot us and get us off of the track that the Lord has us on. He can use anything. And it's just staying connected, staying close to the Lord, staying in prayer, staying, you know, in your word, because there are a lot of things that we have to fight against and we war against. And uh, like they say, this, this warfare is spiritual. This is spiritual warfare. So we need to keep our weapons. The word of God is a great weapon against the warfare that we face. Amen. So staying in your word, studying up, knowing how to recognize a trick of the enemy, knowing how to, to identify when the devil is trying to play a trick so that he cannot, knowing the voice of the Lord. The Lord says that his sheep know his voice and will obey his voice, but if you don't know his voice, if you don't have that intimacy with him, if you don't have that prayer life, if you don't have that connection with him, if you don't work on that relationship, your relationship with Jesus Christ is the most important relationship you will ever have. It needs to be cultivated. It needs to be loved. It needs to be watered. It needs to be nurtured. You have to stay and spend time with him. You have to pray. You have to, to, to commune with him. What type of relationship honestly what type of relationship functions without communication i'll wait for an answer let me let me keep my eyes on the comments what type of relationship functions without communication none none no successful relationship is going to say what if two people are in a relationship that lasts more than five minutes do you, they have to talk they have to have that communication with each other so you can't not talk to god that's all prayer is prayer is talking spending time with the lord so you have to do this you can't say now you talk to your husband your wife your boo thing your boyfriend your girlfriend your sugar plum your honey bunch your ookie pookie pookie pookie. you you talk to them every day as much as you can so why is it when you get down to pray you have you you you, you pray for two minutes and you be like oh i've got nothing else to say this is the lover of your soul this is the one who died for you. This is the one who, who, who is interceding for you. This is the one who is looking out for you, providing for you. How do you have nothing to say? How do you only have two minutes of prayer? By the time you get down and say, Lord, I thank you for waking me up. By the time you give him glory and reverence and honor and thank him for just a portion of what he has done for you in that one day, two minutes should be up. So why is it hard for you to pray past two minutes? If you repeat the Lord's prayer earnestly, that should take you a little while. If you genuinely say thank you for all the things that you're blessed with, that should take you a little while. There should never be a time where any Christian or believer of God or, or, or child of God has nothing to say. Nothing to say to the Lord. I mean, that's where you get your strength from. That's where you get your marching orders from. That's where you get your confirmations from. That's where you get... If there's something that don't quite seem quite right, that's where you go to, to get fueled up. That's where you go to get confirmation on should I or should I not. That's where you go if there's something that just feels uncomfortable and you have questions. Instead of spending the time on the phone with somebody who don't know no more about it than you do, drop to your knees and ask the Father. He is the only one that's going to give you wise counsel. So I don't, I mean... I, I, nah, I'm going all off on a tangent, but we do need to pray. 
with 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 the the Bible coming to pass like it is with it with it just just self fulfilling prophecy happening every time we turn on the news saints of God it's praying time we need to be closer to God now than we have ever been we are living in perilous times perilous times and as bad as we think times are now as bad as we think situations are now as out of control as we think this world is now Honey, in the time of tribulation, this right here is going to look like a cakewalk. This right here is going to be paradise compared to what's going to be going on down here in the years of tribulation. That's why I don't want to be stuck down here. I don't want to be left down here. God, when you crack the sky, my earnest prayer is that I be ready to go with you. That I be ready to go with you. I don't care. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I am not ashamed of the name of Jesus Christ. I'm not ashamed to tell you that I believe that Jesus was born of the Virgin Mary, that he lived, that he hung on the cross, hung, bled, and died for me, that he was buried. And on the third day, he got up with all power in his hands. He is the one true and living God. He is the lover and savior of my soul. He is the only one that can break the chains of bondage and addiction and, 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 and selfishness and malice. He is the only one who can deliver and, and, and heal and set free. He is the only one that could have changed my life. He is the only one who could have changed this heart of mine. He is the only one who could have done these things. I mean, and, and, and he has given us clear and concise instructions on what to look for, what's going to happen, what we are supposed to be looking out for in the last and evil day. And he gives us instructions to look up and know that our salvation is nigh. Our God is coming back. Jesus Christ is coming back. My testimony is I was a wretch undone. I was a sinner on my way to a burning hell. But God, God heard me when I asked for forgiveness. God heard the sinner's prayer that came from my heart and out of my mouth. God heard me turn over my filth and my dirtiness to him. And he washed it whiter than snow. He turned it into something beautiful, something good. All of my problems, all of my misunderstandings, all of the mess that I spent so many years making out of my life, he turned it into something beautiful. Who wouldn't serve a God like that? Who wouldn't tell your friends and family and loved ones about a God like that? Who wouldn't want to share the unmerited favor, the, the unspeakable joy of Jesus Christ? Who wouldn't? I mean, I would. Everything I have, I owe to Christ. Everything I am, I owe to Christ. Hallelujah. So I'm going to stand up and cry loud while I still have time, while I still have a voice to do so, while there is an ear to hear it. If there is anyone who is looking, if there is anyone who is going through, if there's anyone in search of a better way, in search of a better life, in search of peace and joy and wholeness and fulfillment, and like my sis said, purpose, if anyone is in search of that, I offer you Jesus. I offer you Jesus Christ. He will make everything brand new, all right, sparkly. You will be winning, like I said, because through Christ, we have victory. Through Christ, we are victorious. Through Christ, there is nothing that will stand and come against us and win. He is the author and the finisher of our faith. He is our redeemer. He is our protector. He is our sword and our shield. He is everything we need. Even the things that we can't think about right now. We can't even fathom that, you know, down the road, we're going to need this. We're going to stand in need of this. There's going to be some situation we come against that's going to require us to have this. He's given it to us already. We have some stuff in our arsenal that we don't even know we have yet because we haven't even come to need it yet. 
That's the type of God we are. We, we serve. That's the type of God we serve. He keeps us prepared. Before we need it, he makes sure we have it. Ha! Hallelujah. Before we even know what we're going to need it for, he makes sure we have it. Before we really even know how to use it, he makes sure we have it. Because he is not going to withhold any good thing from us. This is word. This is his word. All we have to do is stand on it. Hallelujah. Well, I enjoyed talking to y'all tonight. I really did. And I needed this. I needed to commune with the Testify Tuesday crew. And I hope that all of you enjoyed our guest, Mother Mary Matthews, on this evening. I hope that all of you had a wonderful, wonderful week thus far. Now, I do want you to do me a favor. It's not many of you that are still on here, but for the ones of you that are on here right now, there are a few guests that I want to bring on to Testify Tuesday that I want to come on and do segments, but um, some of them, the time frame of 7 o'clock is not very good for them. So I wanted to know what you guys thought about uh, one Tuesday a month. For, for now, we'll start this because we're booked out now until September. Starting in September, one Tuesday a month, we do a 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time Testify Tuesday. So... The other Tuesdays in the month will be at 7, but there will be one uh, every month starting in September that will be at 9 p.m. This will give me more of a chance to get some of the people that I really want to come on and share with you to give them an opportunity to do so. So just comment and let me know what you guys think about that, having one Tuesday a month that's at 9 o'clock. And then if a later time works for everyone, who knows, we might change and do it more often or we'll see what the Lord has in store and planned. So so if you can, my Testify Tuesday crew, if you can comment and let me know, or you can send me an email in my messenger or send to my um, inbox, just let me know what you guys think about that, okay? All right, we have a wonderful lineup coming up for our Father's Day. For the month of June, we have a wonderful lineup. You, can got, you guys can check. We'll be posting that lineup soon. We have Pastor Damon Mack coming for the first Tuesday in um, June. We have Pastor Gerald Irving coming for the second Tuesday in June. We have Arthur Brother Danae Young coming back for a second time for the third Tuesday in June. And then closing out our Father's Day month is one of my amazing producers and my amazing engineer for my project. We have Brother Stacy Young that will be sharing with us on the last Tuesday in June. So our Father's Day um, specials for June, they are going to be phenomenal. These men of God have a phenomenal testimonies and words of encouragement for us you do not want to miss one week. Now, if you have not done so, please go over to the All Things Felicia Joseph Music Group here on Facebook and join up with us to stay in the know with what's going on. Again, you can visit the website, www.feliciajoseph.com. Um, there you can see uh, about my uh, music, about uh, upcoming engagements. Um, you can get in contact with me about Testify Tuesday, anything like that. Follow me on Instagram at, um, at Felicia underscore Joseph. Um, Twitter, the same, at Felicia underscore Joseph. Um, YouTube, follow me on my YouTube page. Uh, new music coming soon. I told you guys June is the month for the uh, CD release. So keep your ears and your eyes peeled to uh, social media for more information about that. I want to thank you all for spending time with me, and I will see you all right here next week, 7 p.m., Testify Tuesday, where my guest will be Pastor Damon Mack. God bless you all, and have a wonderful night. Bye-bye. <laughs>